Train the muscles, not the joints. I finally achieved utmost success in my life. I have guessed the weight of a pumpkin at the Kilby Historic Site. So I'm gonna take you there as I collect my prize. I think I get a season's pass or something and a mug uh, with some candy in it. So that's a good thing. Uh, candy's always good, right? For bodybuilders, candy good? Yeah, I don't know. But I'm gonna take you there and I'm gonna to talk to you while I'm there, I'll show you around and I'll talk to you about bench pressing and floor pressing and some of the advantages or disadvantages to both methods. Let's go, I'll take you for a ride. Come on, let's, let's go. All right, I made it. I made it. There's a bit of a detour because there's a uh, road closed and all that. So yeah, I had to go the long way around, but here I am. So yeah, so uh, let's talk about bench presses. Let's talk about floor presses. And this is coming from, uh, this is a question coming from one of my Patreon supporters, Robert. So thanks for this. Um, so basically the difference between floor press and bench press is this. Say you're laying on your back on the floor. Obviously your elbows would touch the floor long before the bar touches your chest, assuming you're built like a normal human being. Right? So one of the ways that this is different than just a standard partial range of motion, so say you're doing bench presses and you're just bringing down your elbows to the same range of motion, is that the floor actually stops the momentum. So in essence, this is actually a little bit safer. Like floor press is gonna be safer because you're not relying on the muscles to stop the momentum of the movement, right? So that's probably one of the reasons why uh, a lot of powerlifters do this technique is one of them anyway one of the reasons is that they're going to be using heavier poundages during that shortened range of motion so in order to offset the danger to the muscles stopping the momentum of the weight they use the floor so basically your arm is basically hitting the floor so that's actually stopping the momentum so your muscles aren't having to do the job uh, second of all Powerlifters will want to do this because they don't necessarily want to get hypertrophy in the muscles So they don't want the muscles to do all the work. They want to really stimulate this nervous system, right? So they're trying to take that constant tension sort of thing out of the movements So having the rest pause as well as the explosiveness in the movement is actually beneficial to them because they don't want to put on Extra muscle mass per se in order to stay in the same weight division. That, that's a couple things um, the other thing is that when you are rest pausing or stopping dead at the bottom without relying on the elasticity of the muscle tension, which means whenever your muscle is tense, there's a certain amount of elastic energy. So say I keep that tension in the muscle, it's gonna be easier for me to switch directions in that exercise. So say I'm coming down with a bench press and I'm almost touching my chest and I'm coming up, it's gonna be a little bit easier than if I just totally rest and then relax the muscle at the bottom and then have to fire that muscle right from scratch again. That's because I'm not taking advantage of the elastic energy in the muscle when I let go of that contraction, right? So power lifters wanna stimulate that contraction mostly. They wanna contract. They don't wanna rely on the elastic energy at all. So they wanna basically just have that rest at the bottom and then explode, Right? Now, of course, when you're doing this with the elbows resting on the floor, this is going to be safe because now the weight is not going to be pulling your tendons and ligaments apart and you're going to be able to take advantage of that absolute total relaxation and then contraction right away of the muscle. So uh, these are a couple reasons why powerlifters might want to use this technique. I was told they were going to be open today, but uh, I guess I was misinformed. So I will have to come back and get my prize some other day. But either way, I can still talk to you about bench pressing because you guys like that. That's the only reason why you're here anyway. You don't give a crap what I'm up to otherwise. You're like, hey Jason, how do I get a bigger bench press? That's it. Otherwise, shut up, Jason. Pretty much it. I could tell it my analytics, man. I could tell I look at my views and what video I do, and I could tell exactly what you guys are looking for. So, yep. Just use me for training footage, that's about it. Just use me for training knowledge. Okay, so let's get back to the subject at hand. I've talked about the advantages of floor pressing, and I've uh, talked about why you might want to use floor pressing at times, but that doesn't mean it's, it's really the best way to press, but uh, but in a way, it might be a way of stimulating some strength and handling some heavier poundages 
uh, with a little bit of a safer condition. So yeah, I would say try it out. Uh, the, the other reason too that I haven't covered uh, why this might be a good movement for some people too is when they want to work that higher range of the motion and get through that plateau of the trouble with locking out because a lot of times guys can, they can lift a certain weight and they can get it a few inches above their chest but then when it comes down to locking out that's where they struggle so this actually works and forces the the bench presser to work on the higher range of motion on the lockout it's called right the, basically the locking out of the movement because they have to get a lockout in order to be able to complete the lift so you never see me lock out but in powerlifting what they want to do is complete the lift 100 percent so that they get approved in order to go up and wait right and to get a positive lift so uh, this is a technique to actually work on that weak link or that weak spot in that range of motion that happens with most bench pressers, which is basically the medium to the highest part of the lift. That's that's where they usually struggle with the weight. So, yeah, so if you're having trouble with the top range where you're not able to really get that strength and you feel that that's something that you want to work on because you want to increase your bench press when it comes down to locking out, or you just feel that you're just so super weak at the top range of the motion that it just seems like it's out of balance, maybe this is something you want to do for a period of time just to work on that weak link. So yeah, you can do that if you want. I, I never really did it that much, but, but you can do it. You can do it. I'm not saying not to do it. I'm not saying because I didn't do it, you can't do it. You can do it. Nothing wrong with that. Kind of nice out here. Now, as a bodybuilder, can this technique work for you? I think anything and everything can work for you. Anything that helps stimulate the body from a different angle, anything that helps put tension on muscles or increase strength is gonna help your bodybuilding. So floor pressing is definitely worth it. It's definitely worth a try. And uh, for those of you that have shoulder injuries or who have shoulder injuries, uh, maybe this reduced range of motion plus uh, the reduced tension at the bottom of the movement might actually help you get some chest training in without actually putting any stress on the shoulder joints. So it might be something worth a try. But like I said, you might not get the same hypertrophy gains because you are once again uh, letting go of that tension on the muscle. So you're not getting the same time under tension, but you're letting go of that tension on the muscle at the bottom and then you're coming up again. But it's up to you. Try it. I mean, I'm open to anything. Try it out. I, I never used floor pressing my whole life. I did it a few times, but it's not necessarily something that has been a staple in my training program. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't try it. Let me take you around here for a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hop the fence. I got permission from the person that works here. She, she said it's okay for me to go under here, so don't get mad at me. I'm doing this legally, so don't you come do this. So basically what I'm supposed to do is uh, be nice to the property, of course. But yeah, I want to show you here. This is Kilby Historic Site. And so basically you can come down here. If you're ever in Harrison, this is uh, in Harrison Mills, actually. So it's a little bit out on the outskirts of Harrison. So yeah, you can come take a look at some of the animals here. Here we go. <laughs> How's it going? You coming to say hi? Yeah? Yeah, that's good. How's it going? Hmm? Hey, yeah, I can see you. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of neat to get to, they got some animals, they got some apple trees and they got really an old historic uh, building. They're actually doing a paranormal dinner in there for Halloween. So it's kind of funny because it's supposed to be haunted in there. It's supposed to have paranormal activity, right? So, uh, but, but it's kind of neat. Like you see all these old utensils and, and things that they used in order to farm back in the day. I think this is uh, somewhere around the beginning of the 19th century that this was built. So as you can see, things are on stilts because we're in an area where two rivers meet, Harrison River and the Fraser River. So there's lots of different uh, flooding capacities that go on here. A lot, of, a lot of farms and stuff get flooded, right? So here's some pigs. These guys are like, hey man, you guys really need to go on a cut, man. Yep. Actually, you guys aren't too bad. You're pretty lean, eh? And there's some chickens right there. Yeah. I really don't need to label the animals. I'm pretty sure you guys can figure out which animal's what. These guys all think I'm going to feed them or something. I don't know what the... Yeah, I don't have anything for you. You seem to be pretty happy in that mud, though. You seem to be pretty happy in that mud. Hey, yeah, see? Lower your expectations in life. It makes you much happier. Yeah, just take, uh, take some of the advice of the pigs. <laughs> so, yeah, so here's uh, yeah, a couple little places here where there's always a random cat around. You see the cat up there? He's trying to hide from me now. You missed your cat? Oh, there he is. Yeah. What's going on? 
So it's kind of neat. This is kind of like going back in time where you actually get a glimpse of the past uh, from the early 19th, well, early 20th century, basically, right? So it shows all the different old farming utensils that they used to use and all that. And this cat is not happy, basically, because I've ignored the cat. So now the cat's saying, hey, hey, man, my territory, you just jumped up on the fence here. <laughs> it's funny. See, what's going on? So yeah, so that's a little little version of it. Too bad the place is closed today because I was going to show you inside a little bit, but I'll take you back here at some point in the future. But if you ever want to go to the Kilby Historic Site, I'll put the link down below and you can check out the Kilby Historic Site yourself. It's a great place to bring kids and they do little events like uh, from time to time, like where I basically guess the, the poundage of the pumpkin. I'm pretty proud of that. And uh, yeah, you can see some pumpkins back there. Maybe let's see them. And then they do uh, some apple cider presses and stuff. And then they do, uh, yeah, they have a restaurant in there and they do like lots of baked goods and all that, all the stuff that you probably can't eat on a cut, but but it's still pretty good. The pies and all that stuff, right? So yeah, it's kind of a neat uh, blast from the past kind of place to visit. So yeah, come check it out if you're ever in the area. It's a kind of neat touristy little place to go. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something from it and maybe, you know, got to see a couple things. And uh, if you need to get hold of me, just go to naturallinebodymilk.com and thanks a lot to the patient supporters and take care for now. Aha, I got a hold of somebody. There is somebody in there. And I might be able to get my prize. I think I got a mug or something. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. You, you guys win a mug. Then you could brag about it in a video. Ah, uh, the simple pleasures in life, eh? Look at the tree. Train the muscles, not the joints. And uh, I actually have showed you around this place before where there's actually a campsite. Campsite's awesome because they have all these fire pits and stuff and it's right on the river. So you might really enjoy that. So if you need a place to camp, this place is the place to go. It's really cheap too. So I think it's only like 10 bucks a night or something. I would recommend if you're driving through BC, driving down to the lower mainland, this is a great place to come. There you go. You got my prize. <laughs> That's right. Okay, good. Good guess, I good guess. I